The theme of this module is learning how to manage our stress. Life in the modern world is 24-7, fast-paced and increasingly stressful. The phrase stress epidemic is often used, especially to describe our working lives. It's much harder to escape from work than in the past. With modern technology, there can often be an expectation that we are contactable day and night. We're now also beginning to understand the toll that stress can take on our health. Let's start by thinking about what stress actually is. The stress response is your body's natural response to a threat. It's actually really clever, and in ancient times would have been vital for survival. When you see something that you perceive to be a threat, like a near miss in a car, your body initiates the fight or flight response. Adrenaline is released, which causes changes throughout your body. Your heart pumps faster to get more oxygen around your circulation. More blood gets pumped to your arms and legs. You breathe faster, you think more acutely, and you hear more acutely. Your pupils dilate. These are not all the changes that happen. The adrenaline also switches off various bodily functions to save unnecessary energy. For instance, the gut slows down, you stop producing saliva, so your mouth feels dry, and you don't produce as much urine. On top of that, a hormone called cortisol is also released from the adrenal glands. It causes the release of sugar into the bloodstream to provide energy and puts the immune system on high alert. So as you can see, all these changes would be ideal if, for example, you were a caveman and a wolf had just stuck its nose around the entrance of your cave. You'd be in the best physical state to run as fast as you could. Not something we need to do often these days, but elements of the stress response can still be useful, for instance, to focus our minds if we're about to give a presentation at work, for example. Normally, after a stressful event has ended, the stress response should also stop. Everything should go back to normal and we should have come to no harm at all. So how does the stress response go wrong? Well, a short period of stress is completely fine and as mentioned, can even be helpful. But if we are under constant physical or psychological stress with constant activation of the system, problems can begin to arise. That feeling of your heart racing, your hands trembling or tightness in the chest is not a pleasant feeling. Fine if it happens now and again, but if for whatever reason it happens a lot, it can make you feel really awful. I'm sure you've been through stressful periods in your life before. Sleep is difficult. Things always seem worse at night. It's hard to focus. It's more difficult to enjoy the things you normally would. As well as making you feel bad, it's also not good for your body. Having that adrenaline and cortisol constantly circulating around at high levels increases your risk of high blood pressure and therefore heart attacks and strokes. It pushes your blood sugars up and can make you more prone to type 2 diabetes. Stress can impact people differently because there are a huge range of different personality types. Some people seem to get anxious and feel stress more easily than others. There are other people who seem to be totally laid back, even in the worst of circumstances. It's like everything else in life, there's a huge range of normality. Having some level of anxiety and stress is completely normal, but even within that normality, there are things we know we can do that helps to reduce it. So how do you recognise when the level of stress or anxiety you're feeling becomes abnormal? Again, that varies from individual to individual. If stress or anxiety is having an impact on your day-to-day -day life, it's definitely time to think about doing something about it. We'll talk about some of the changes you can make yourself that we know can help. You should also discuss it with your doctor though, as if your symptoms are severe enough, they may recommend medication or talking therapies as well as lifestyle change. Good general advice for dealing with stress is to do your best to eat healthily, sleep well, stay active and avoid alcohol and too much caffeine. Of course, it may be even more difficult to stick to that advice when you're particularly stressed, but bear it in mind. Our other modules deal with many of these issues. During the stress modules, we'll focus on several different areas. We'll study our stressors, or in other words, the things that make us stressed, and work on any small changes that we can make to reduce stress. We'll look at our home life and our work life. This is called organisational intervention. We'll also look at mental relaxation. Learning how to relax can help us cope with the stresses in life we can't get rid of.